Hey everyone, we are in Monte Carlo Square and in this video, we're gonna show you all about our day trip to Monaco. That's right, let's go. Welcome back everybody. In this video, we're gonna show you some of the highlights of things to do in one of the world's smallest and most luxurious countries, Monaco. Monaco is a quick day trip from Cannes and is a must see while you're in the French Riviera. So here's how our day went. Good morning everyone. Today we are headed to Monaco. We were up early and walked from our Airbnb to the Cannes train station. We were all dragging a little bit because while you're in Cannes, the evenings are late. We didn't eat dinner until 9 p.m. the night before and didn't get home until around 11. Thankfully, there's a great bakery right across the street from the train station and Brooke was able to grab some breakfast and some much needed caffeine. All right, delivering me espresso. espresso. And Cheers. watch out, it's hot. Super hot. I got a special treat. Look, here are oh. Watch out, Oh it's my very gosh, did you find them? I found it. Oh my gosh, we had these 10 years ago when we were here. Oh, a lot of Ray, they had them so good. And oh, then so Kinsey, good. another fan, another find. I so got. Kinsey has a little obsession with meringues, so we oh, found geez. the biggest one. Oh my god, Kinsey. It feels so light. That's it's bigger like than a, your head. It is. That is nuts. <laughs> All right, well thanks for breakfast because I don't think we get anything on the train. Um, we're down in platform one, so let's head that way. So we booked our tickets from Cannes to Monaco through Omeo, which we've used before in other videos to travel by train around France. It's an easy to use booking site and there's also an app which makes it convenient when you're on the go. The train only has one class of service and the trip from Cannes to Monaco was just over an hour. The total cost for our family of four booking a week out was around 30 euro one way. It was a quick and easy train ride and before we knew it we were getting off the train in Monaco. Now here's a fun tip. When we travel to a new country, we always like to get our passports stamped. But in Monaco, they don't stamp your passports, but you can go to the information center in the train station when you arrive and you can get these souvenir passports. Exactly, so they don't stamp your real passport, but they have souvenir ones, which is especially good for the kids and me. And that's <laughs> cool. There we go, yeah, we are officially in Monaco. Of note, there's no Uber in Monaco, so when we left the train station, we had to hire a taxi to take us to our first stop, the Oceanographic Museum of Monaco. All right, we made it to Monaco, and our first stop is the Oceanographic Museum right behind us. And it shows that they have a polar bear, so I'm excited. I don't think I've ever seen a polar bear, right? But look how fancy it is. It's pretty nice here. You know what polar bears look like? Meringues. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. So here we are at our number one rated thing to do with the family in Monaco, visit the Oceanographic Museum. We bought our tickets ahead of time online through the website and ticket prices were 15 euro per adult and 10 euro per child. So as we start exploring the museum, here are some facts. The museum was founded in 1910 by Prince Albert I of Monaco. The museum's location is unique. It sits cliffside overlooking the Mediterranean with some breathtaking views. The famous French oceanographer and filmmaker Jacques Cousteau was the director of the museum for over 30 years. The museum has marine wildlife from all over the world and some state-of-the-art exhibits. So let's check them out. Oh, look at this guy. Oh, whoa. Hello there. Oh, you're showing off for the camera. <laughs> I know, he did. He came right over to us. Here comes a guy. Dad, that's a you. <laughs> All right, so far, pretty cool. Hey, Brooke, what do we got here? Just a shark. Whoa. Just a chilling shark. Big guy. Kinsey's obsessed with sharks, so this really? is a oh. what kind of shark is that? Daughter. The indoor exhibits took us about 45 minutes to get through, and it wasn't that crowded, so that was nice. Now let's head outside and check out those views we were talking about earlier. This was pretty cool. As we headed outside, there was a path down to the next level, and along the way, there were many more exhibits on the edge of these high cliffs with some amazing views. <laughs> Oh 
so the cool thing about this aquarium is we are literally on the cliffs of Monaco overlooking the Mediterranean. So we've got this awesome aquarium and then this awesome view. It makes me excited for our excursion tomorrow. And right now we're looking at the baby turtles, tortoises, tortugas. He wants over so bad. He wants to his friend. What about you? Yeah, there are people snooping or snooping about any of these. Wow. Once back inside, there were many more exhibits and some displays on Jacques Cousteau and the history of the museum. This next exhibit was like nothing we've ever seen. It was a state-of-the-art interactive room which took you on a mission to the polar Arctic. Wow, the ice is cracking, Kenzie. This is so I didn't think we'd see a real polar bear, but this looks pretty cool. Skills that to be able to observe whales in the underwater valley of seals that are mucus. Most of them are mucus. No, look, look, Brooks. They're looking at you. Look at it. She made him come over. Kenzie, go touch it. Now that was the coolest thing. That was so awesome. The exhibits kept going on and there was so much to see in this museum, but we were all very impressed and it's definitely worth the visit. What do you think of this museum so far? Dude, this is aesthetically the coolest museum I have ever seen regarding oceans. Yeah, um, I'd say and so. Probably so. from maritime to, uh, it, this is an incredible must see, must do area to come to. With kids, adults, by yourself, whatever, come to it. Whatever, come to it. <laughs> and there's a lot of interactive stuff that you can do. So it's great for the adults. I'm super entertained and also the kids as well. So I'm glad this was our first stop in Monaco. All right, it's time to wrap up our time here at the Oceanographic Museum. After a quick stop at the gift shop, it was time to head out, but definitely put this on your list of things to do while you're here. All right, first stop in Monaco complete, the Oceanographic Museum, which took us about two hours and I thought was actually really cool. It was a really cool museum. Now we're in the heart of Monaco. I think we're gonna head over to the palace. There's a changing of the guard and we need to get something to eat because we've been up all morning and haven't really eaten yet and it is lunchtime. And but it is hot. But definitely check out the Oceanographic Museum in Monaco. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. It. There's a lot of history to it and it sits right on the cliffs of Monaco. So there's amazing views once you get inside and at some of the exhibits. Yeah, it's definitely one of the coolest museums on the ocean I have ever seen. So check it out. <laughs> Oh, and another travel tip, buy your tickets online, that way you don't have to wait in line when you get here. And also, if you purchase tickets to enter before 11 a.m. or after 5 p.m. in the day, so either in the morning or in the afternoon, the tickets are cheaper because it's less crowded during those times. So just outside the 
Oceanographic Amazing Museum are Grace Kelly's Gardens. So these gardens are actually called the St. Martin Gardens and sit cliffside between the Oceanographic Museum and the Monaco Cathedral. Along the way there is a statue of Grace Kelly and there is a nice shaded path from the museum to the Monaco Cathedral. At the end of the gardens there's also a great viewpoint lookout over one of the harbors of Monaco. Check out this little crow's nest overlooking Monaco. As we'll soon show you, the summer in Monaco is hot and humid. We were very thankful for these gardens because they provided a nice, cool, shaded path as we walked toward the Monaco Cathedral and into town. At this point, we were all pretty hot and the kids were getting hungry, so we elected not to go into the Monaco Cathedral. We continued to walk and seek out a spot that was nice and cool for some lunch. Eventually, we came upon this great alley with a ton of restaurants and cafes on our way to the palace. However, like most cafes in Europe, there's a ton of patio seating outside. We were on a mission though to find some air con and a cooler spot inside. Wait, mom. All right, so we're walking around Monte Carlo and it is so hot here just like everywhere else. But we yeah, found- Yeah, thanks to me, I found- Thanks to Parker. This restaurant. We like, found a restaurant with air conditioning it inside. Feels, it feels so nice. So nice. <laughs> and we have a fan on this kid. Yeah, it's nice. Much cooler in here. So these little side streets, where does it remind you of? Um, I don't know. Italy? Yeah. Italy, but really Croatia, Dubrovnik. Yeah. Yeah. But we're going to sit so here for a while and enjoy yeah. the air conditioning and cool off. And eat some yeah. Italian pasta. So it is so hot in Monaco, like everywhere else, but the girls found something. What'd you get? We did. Check this. Oh, oh, nice. Wait, wait, wait. Fancy. Wait, wait. Hi, cool. kids. All right, let's see it. Oh, that's a pretty one. It, it says oh, Monaco. Good. So I can and there's the, the palace money. right hey, behind Mom. us. So this is the best souvenir. I highly that's suggest it because it gets it's so good. hot good. here. I feel like a diva with this. And it's really fun to practice your oh, local traffic coming through. Hold on. <laughs> I'm a master. Those fans the girls found were definitely a great souvenir and investment while we were in Monaco because they were definitely helpful the rest of the day. So here we are outside the Palace of Monaco. It was just a short walk down an alley from where we ate lunch. Unfortunately, we missed the changing of the guard, which happens daily at noon in this courtyard outside of the palace. But we were still up for the self-guided tour of the palace, so we headed over to the ticket office to purchase our tickets. We read online that you didn't need to do this ahead of time. All right, we got our tickets to go view and visit the Prince's Palace here in Monaco. It was $10 for the adults, and kids under 17 were $5, 5 euros. But anyway, so now we're off to the palace, and we're going to see if we can see the prince. Yeah. Because I do hear that sometimes he's walking around and just waves at you and he's like, oh, hey, there's the prince. Okay, okay. bye guys. I thought he was in that room. I'm obsessed. <laughs> so the prince's palace has been around since 1215 and is the official residence of the Prince of Monaco and one of Monaco's most impressive landmarks. So the tour of the palace is basically a self-guided audio tour where you get to visit several of the salons throughout the palace. You only get to visit a small portion of the palace, but it is great to see inside and it is great to see some of the museum artifacts and frescoes that have been in the palace for years. And it was also exciting to have the small chance to see the Prince of Monaco, Prince Albert, Grace Kelly's son. But unfortunately, we didn't get to see him while we were there, but we did get to see his throne room. After the throne room, we walked through several more rooms of the palace. The nice thing was, is we were out of the sun and it was a lot cooler while we were walking through the palace. Oh, and don't get too close to anything. It was nice to see some of the museum pieces and learn a little bit about the history of the Prince's Palace in Monaco. It smells of leather band box and rich mahogany. <laughs> Now this is the life of the prince. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some old books. 
So we just got out of the palace, and it was basically just all the museum rooms, but we got to see some of the old um, art. art, and the, we got to see the throne room. Yep. But we walked through it in about 30 minutes. Yeah. And it was $30 for our entire family. But I don't know. Wasn't the best tour or, you know, thing we've done, but it was just good to be inside the palace in Monaco and... I would say if you're short on cash or running by a tighter budget, you can definitely skip this. And um, But just definitely but come, you, come to the palace, take pictures outside. Yes. There's always a chance that when you're in the palace, you'll see the prince, but we did not today. All right, onward. We're going to head down to the promenade uh, down by the Monaco Harbor. Parker, there's only one guard. Do you think you can rush the castle and take him? You should wave at him. Yeah, I think I can take them. <laughs> I bet you can't. He has a gun, so no. All right, we are off again to our next stop. The nice thing about Monaco is everything is labeled and marked with directions to most of the major landmarks, and there are pathways along the way. Once you leave the Prince's Palace, if you take a left, or if you're looking at the Prince's Palace, go to the right. There's a pathway which comes around the corner and leads down this hill to Monaco Harbor and where we're headed next, the Monte Carlo Casino. Along the way, there's a great spot called the Harbor Viewpoint, which the name says it all, and it's a great place to stop and take pictures and take in the view of the harbor down below. I'm gonna go look at Monaco Harbor. So from this vantage point, I'll show you where we're going. We're gonna walk down the path and exit here, then we're gonna walk around the harbor, and the Monte Carlo Casino is on this end. It looks really far, but it's only about a 30 minute walk. The only gotcha is it's extremely warm and humid. We're trying to walk in the shade, but it's against all the other pedestrian traffic. But I don't think we really care right now. I just need a super, super cold restaurant and a nice, nice cup of water. Mm. Please, we need a restaurant. Keep going, and I know. Need somewhere to cool off. Every once in a while, we duck into a shop just to cool off. Even if we don't even like what they have, I mean, it's cold. All right, we're getting closer. I can see the boats. Can you guys see the boats? Yes. Yeah. The yachts. I can see them. We're getting closer. At the bottom of the hill along the harbor, it's actually pretty cool because it's the race course for the Monaco Grand Prix. So we decided to take a little pit stop and duck into a cafe, get a cool drink and cool off for a little bit. And then it was back up the hill toward the Grand Casino. We're walking up this hill. It's about a quarter of a mile. And we are sweating our butts off. But check out that view. At the top of this hill was the famous Monte Carlo Casino and the Cafe de Paris. We were so glad to get there. Welcome to the Grand Casino in Monte Carlo. All right, here's some facts on the Monte Carlo Casino. It's not just a gambling destination, but it's an iconic landmark and a must visit while in Monaco. The casino has been featured in several James Bond movies, such as Casino Royale, and is a real world playground for the rich and famous. However, anyone can visit the public area that we are in now, but to go inside the actual casino, there are some strict guidelines. So let me say something real quick. When you read online, it says um, no shorts, no sneakers, no kids, no, no photography, no, no flip flops. flops. But that's to get into the actual casino. But you can still come in the main building, which we showed you uh, from the outside, and you can come check out the lobby and everything. So you just can't go inside the casino. Okay, no we didn't get kicked out, but she didn't like me filming. So we hung out for just a bit longer and then we decided to leave. As you leave the casino, you're right in the center of Monte Carlo. Look at all the people out. These cars are awesome. We are in the heart of Monte Carlo. We recommend hanging out here for a bit, people watching, taking in all that Monte Carlo has to offer. And it's a great place to take some pictures. But this is the heart of Monte Carlo. If you're a James Bond fan, this is where Casino Royale was based and filmed at the Monte Carlo Casino. So definitely this is a highlight when you're here in Monaco and come check it out. 
After hanging out for a bit, we decided to make our way over to Metropole, which is a large shopping center, and it's enclosed. So we thought there might be air conditioning in there, and we are still quite warm, so we're going to make our way over there as quickly as we can. Along the way to our right here is Cafe de Paris. It's a great place to have an aperitivo and people watch. And then on the other side of the square is the Hotel de Paris. Now we're going to go look for the shops. Oh, yeah. The Metropole was about a five minute walk from Monte Carlo Square. And I know we keep mentioning this, but when you're here during the summer, be ready for the heat and the humidity. We are glad to get inside of these shops because it was a lot cooler and yes, there was air conditioning. Finally, we're in the Metropole shops and it's air conditioned in here. And Matt, how hot are you? I am so hot. I should not have wore pants today. You can get away with wearing shorts and sneakers, flip flops, not flip flops but I should not have worn pants today. You can get away with wearing shorts in Monaco and Monte Carlo. I am so hot, I'm drenched, you can't really tell, but you can see my face. It's so hot, this is how hot I used to be sometimes getting out of the F-16 after flying a mission, just drenched in sweat. Yeah. So <laughs> and I'm in the center of Monte Carlo in a fancy uh, Metropole shopping center right now. Right, I told Matt too, this is definitely the hottest I think I've ever been in my entire existence. But if you're looking for somewhere cool, come to the Metropole shops. Yeah. I'm gonna go find a spot to sit with Parker. We're gonna grab a refreshing drink and just sit there and cool down in the air conditioning. I think oh, that's yeah. a great idea. Right there. I need that ice cream. I need that ice cream. Yeah, I'm cooling off. <laughs> All right, Kenzie got her ice cream and we got some refreshing drinks. After cooling off for a bit and relaxing off our feet, it was time to check out some of the shops. So the Metropole is the largest and most luxurious shopping center in Monaco. It's got over 80 boutiques and seven restaurants dedicated to fashion, gastronomy, beauty, and fine jewelry. We enjoyed walking around and window shopping for a bit in this much cooler atmosphere. That's it for the shops at Metropole in Monte Carlo. How'd you guys, did you guys have fun? Yeah, yeah we did. Kenzie got a new cute little bag. Oh, yeah. Nice. yeah. And the best, the best thing was Parker and I sat at the cafe in air conditioning and yeah. enjoyed our relaxation and cooled off. All right, now we're headed back to the train station. Yep, that pretty much made a full day and we are all pretty worn out. It's time to make our way back. We're glad we made it here because we had a great time seeing all these sights. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to head up by all the fancy shops toward the Opera House and go catch our train. Okay, let's do it. But before we go, we are a little caught off guard by this. So if anybody knows what this is all about, please let us know in the comments below. Well, when we came to Monaco in Monte Carlo, we didn't think we would see what? A big bottle of ketchup, but yet there it is. It's Daddy's, Daddy's ketchup. ketchup. And I have no idea why that is in the heart of Monte Carlo. I don't know, but I don't. We hope this video was helpful and gave you a little insight on the things to do in Monaco with a family. And as we mentioned along the way, if you're here in the summer, be prepared for the heat. Make sure you have lots of water and take several stops to cool down wherever you can. And thanks for spending the day with us. All right, everybody, everybody is sweating. We just walked to the train. Hope you enjoyed this video on our day trip to Monaco. And don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Woo! See ya! <laughs> don't forget to like and subscribe for more American Travel Family Adventures. One, two, three. Very good.